That's amazing. And, and also like, I just think there's so many different routes and ways that you can get into this quite, because I feel like it's quite a, for want of a better term, quite a, an incestuous industry. Like yeah. you get a lot of people moving between teams. Like, did you ever have opportunities or did you ever consider during your time at Red Bull, like opportunities elsewhere or? Um, did I consider opportunities elsewhere? Hmm. I was offered t two roles, one at McLaren and one at Mercedes. And I declined them both uh, purely because I was, I was happy at Red Bull. And were they but, different roles? Or no, were they... no, they're pr pretty much what I was doing already. Yeah. Um, I had someone that worked in the same team as me, left, went to Mercedes, and he was back with us, I think, within six months. He just didn't wow. enjoy it. Yeah. Because Mercedes are very much like this uh, very corporate entity. Yep. Like when you go into the factory, you have to wear your... Hugo Boss shirts are and all that, whatever it was at the time. Whereas Red Bull, if I want to show up like this, it's fine. You know, as long as I'm not on telly, no one cares. Yeah. And it was more laid back and it was like, I'd say the party atmosphere yeah. is still very much alive in Red Bull. Yeah, which I think Red Bull's kind of got that reputation. I think you can see that there is that, there isn't that same level of, I mean, you can talk about like the Ron, Ron Dennis years at, at McLaren. They were very known for being very, yeah. cut and straight and even though even though mclaren has a bit more of a soft uh, like brand image now than it used to mm -hmm. i still think it is kind of quite cutthroat yeah um there but obviously that's just company culture and you'd obviously developed a very specific set of skills there again for anyone like listening who wanted to get involved in formula one and having spoken to the people that you've spoken to and like what would you say that the the least glamorous part of the job is, and not necessarily just in your role, but until because you know it. it's very glamorous. Like, oh, you fly all around the world and blah blah blah. But actually, I think the reality is quite different, right? Yeah, it's it's not it's not that glamorous at all. So, if you're young, free, and single, and this is what I say quite a lot, if mm. you're young, free, and single, go for it because you will spend six months out of twelve out of the country. Yeah, which is like I say, if you're in that position, that's fine. But if you're like me. I've got three young kids now and a wife, and that's the reason I left. It just, it was too much family time. And you see that quite a lot in F1. Once people sort of reach that stage where they've got a family, they think it's too much. So they either go to a permanent factory role, mm -hmm. which even then the hours can be quite, you know, hard for that. Um, or they just leave completely. And I, I just decided, you know what? Six years, mm. Max got his championship. Yeah. Regardless of uh, how controversial, I'll still take it. And how, of those six years, how how much of that time were you spent at the track versus at the factory, would you say? Uh, it's So about half and half, I would say. I didn't travel to every single race. Mm. My role didn't really require that. Okay. Um, I was mainly sort of factory based and looking after, obviously, the factory, wind tunnel, simulators, uh, Red Bull Advanced Technology, um, some of the stuff from Aston when that partnership was still up and running and then trackside as well. So quite a lot of stuff, mm. but for only one person. <laughs> Can I also, just on a on a personal note, Alex Albon. Yeah, here 2020. we go. Here we go. I just, I just want to, you, you know my perspective on it and it was a tough season as an Albon fan. Um, obviously you being there and in, he was under a lot of scrutiny, a lot of pressure obviously we're seeing particularly now Checo's performances I think Max is starting to open that gap back mm -hmm. up again I don't think there was if you look at the numbers there wasn't much in it between you know Verstappen Albon in 2020 and, and Verstappen Perez in 2021 Perez got the wins but all in all that pace golf was quite similar like what did you make of Alex did you have many experiences with him and what do you think maybe rent went right versus what yeah went wrong? um so on a personal level Alex Super nice guy. He was very personable. Um, one of the stories I like to say was that um, Red Bull got a house in Milton Keynes that some of the drivers were living for a certain amount of time. And at the time, Alex was living in it. Now, when you go after an event, um, you have all the guys that get on a bus at Milton Keynes, the factory, and then the drivers will have a private car that will take them to mm. a, a private plane or whatever. But Alex being in Milton Keynes, he was just like, no, I'm 10 minutes around the corner. Why don't I just come get the bus with you? So 
which was unheard Good of. No, none of the Good other drivers man. have done that. Yeah. So yeah, Alex would just sort of get on the bus with us, like a commoner. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> you know, sit with us on like an easy jet flight or whatever. You know, he, he wasn't bothered. Yeah, it's a bit down to work. Well, because how important I, it's talked a lot about how important the driver relationship with the the team is with the not just the mechanics but the team in general and, and how you know when you've got a driver who really kind of believes in the like is that a big did you feel that when you were working with obviously you, there were various different drivers who went through the doors at Red Bull during your time there but do you feel that that is that a big deal to the team when you've got a driver that you know cracks on works hard or do, the, do the team just do their job regardless? The team will do their job regardless. Uh, it doesn't really matter who you've got, but it's a morale sort mm. of thing, you know? So if Alex is walking around the factory, taking time to speak to people and things like that, yeah. you're going to have more time for mm. him. You're going to have that more loyalty to him sort of thing, you know? But it's not going to affect how hard you work yeah. because the end goal is the same. It doesn't matter who's driving the car. You just want a championship. Mm. But I guess yeah. if you like the driver as well, I guess that extra it little helps. bit of, yeah, it's yeah. only going to help. But because also, you know, it wasn't only Alex who, who had a poor time in the Red Bull, obviously Pierre as well. Mm -hmm. Like that season, you know, I've read various things about talking about how kind of Pierre, I think the way, from what I understand, the way Pierre kind of conducted himself when he was at Red Bull probably wasn't the best and maybe he regrets it. I mean, what do you think of that whole Pierre Gasly thing? Because he proved after just how good he is. So it wasn't really a necessarily a talent thing. No. But there's a lot more to it than that. Isn't yeah, there? I think Pierre's problem was he got, he started to doubt himself, I think, in his own head. And then like we're seeing now with Ricardo, once you start doing that, you just sort of come on a downward spiral and then uh, there was one point where, again, I wasn't there, so I can't confirm or deny it, but apparently he got quite, Pierre got quite vocal with Adrian over the setup of the car, and it sort of became a bit of a shouting match in the garage. And then once that happened, you know, in front of Marco and that, it was back mm. to the sister team you go. Yeah, because I, I do, they did have that opportunity to put him back in the car, didn't they, after Perez 2021, and they decided not 